Hardly a speck of life has broken through the flat parched plains of the coastal bend. By the looks of it, you would think it was winter and not the plentiful growing season of spring and summer. Fields normally full of lush grains and cotton are lifeless as far as the eye can see. There's been times that, you know, it's been dry, but normally it seems like we always got to crop up, got it going. But uh, this year is, it's such a huge area, it's a first, I've never seen nothing like it. Losses throughout the coastal bend are quickly mounting. 75% of the area's grain crop has failed. An average year for Driscoll Grain Co-op is anywhere from 12 to 1,400 carloads. That's about 100,000 pounds of grain per carload. What does make it to harvest won't be a bumper crop by any stretch. The grain that has broken through resembles more of a volunteer crop, sprouting here and there, in all shades of green and should be headed out, but isn't. Penny pinching is the name of the game, as the trick now is trying to stay out of the red. It'll be hard to just, you know, keep the doors open this year. We'll probably some of the part-time help I'm sure we'll lay off just to cut back expenses and just we'll just skimp by on those bare necessities for the next year. For area cotton gins, it's the same tune, different verse. About 95% of the cotton crop has been failed out. Most of it didn't even reach daylight, forcing many cotton gins in the area to keep their doors shut for the season. True gin is one that may run silent. In a typical year, the gin turns out around 30 to 35,000 bales of cotton. This year, it's a different story. They have like 1,200 acres left that's still growing, but that's got a long ways to go till harvest. So, you know, even if it, even if it go to harvest, it'd probably be maybe 1,000 bales, which is, you know, a drop in a bucket for what, what they normally have. As more and more fields are released and crops zeroed out, the paperwork is signed and crop insurance checks have already started rolling in. But the full wrath of the drought is reaching way beyond the farm gate. There is no trickle-down effect for the ag-related businesses when the farmer gets an insurance check. He puts that in the bank naturally and tries to cover his expenses, but there's nothing for the grain elevators, the combine people, the truck drivers, the crop dusters, you know, and chemical companies. It goes a lot further than a lot of people realize it. Brown runs a three-plane business, Nueces Ag Service, in Robstown. He has not turned a prop since December and does not expect to be called to do so anytime soon. If they declare it a disaster area, I'll qualify for a low-interest SBA loan, which is like 4%, but that's just digging your debt hole that much deeper. And uh, most of us have got, already got SBA loans, and we don't want any more. Driscoll Grain and True Gin are teaming up, working to minimize expenses mainly when it comes to labor. Workers for TrueGen have been contracted to build new offices and help with maintenance at Driscoll Grain. The last such drought dates back to the 1950s. The locals say this one is worse. Much of the area has not seen any rain since September, and experts say the coastal bend is some 18 inches shy of normal rainfall and quickly climbing. Farmers are left scratching their heads on where to go from here. For some, replanting is a good possibility. Most farmers, such as the Smiths, are choosing to lick their wounds and move on. It's just wild to drive around this country and look at all this blank dirt. It's, it's, I hope I never see it again. For Voices of Agriculture, Tom Nicoletti, Nueces County.